Hi everyone, this is Mr. Sinti, and I'm going to talk to you about the cell membrane a little bit further. We had talked before about the structure of the cell membrane, but now I want to talk to you a little bit about how molecules move across. This is a picture down here of the cell membrane. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how the traffic across cell membranes is quite extensive. It's steady. You've got gases going across, you've got sugar, amino acid, all kinds of things. And what we said about the cell membrane before was that it's selectively permeable. So I want to like, continue that kind of conversation. But there's really two questions in play here. So I want you to be thinking about these two questions. So question number one is, how do molecules pass across the cell membrane? And then maybe more importantly, the question that, that is really on everyone's mind is, why, does, why do molecules pass? Past the cell membrane. And so how they pass has to do with the structure of the cell membrane and the particular uh, aspects of the molecule and why something crosses the cell membrane has to do with diffusion. And so that's what this conversation is about. And so let's take a look here at the next slide and see what happens. So if you remember the structure of the cell membrane, this is a a very simple model, but it's effective. This is the cell membrane without proteins or sugars on the outside or cholesterol. This is simply the phospholipid bilayer. Let me emphasize a couple things. So you could ask the question, how does carbon dioxide cross? So how does carbon dioxide cross the cell membrane? And you're like, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Well, you would say, well, at first, it's you have to know that it's a high hydrophobic molecule. Hydrophobic means it doesn't like water. And so when you draw it out like this, you can simply see that it's made up of nonpolar covalent bonds and it's really small, which means that the membrane, the bilayer in particular, remember is a fluid, kind of like an oil, it's very hydrophobic. And so carbon dioxide just simply moves very readily across the cell membrane. So it just goes right through the bilayer. Same with oxygen. Oxygen is small and it's nonpolar. Oxygen simply moves easily across the cell membrane. So that's how these two molecules move. And so what happens if you consider something else? Like something else that's rather important to us. Sorry. Something else that's rather important to us would be something like an ion. Now, a list of ions would be sodium ions, chlorine ions, potassium ions, calcium ions, except, excuse me, <laughs> calcium ions. And so all, all of these things have an electrical charge. And if, and if something has an electrical charge, it doesn't matter that it's very, very small. Even something as small as sodium or chlorine, it's not going to pass through the cell membrane it's going to pass through a protein. So proteins are going to be able to facilitate, switch to this, proteins are going to be able to facilitate the movement or assist the movement across the cell membrane. Even if you're a polar molecule, like it's an example of a polar molecule, something like glucose or an amino acid or really any other sugar. And, and remember what we mean by that. A polar molecule is something that attracts water. And so this is going to have a difficult time passing through the cell membrane because the cell membrane is basically uh, impermeable. So as you can see this, here's the bilayer. And then see this green thing? This is a protein. This protein is going to provide a channel or a conduit for which molecules can pass through. So if I asked you this question, like for example, like what difficulty with that. What molecule would this be? And the answer to that question would be that could be glucose, that could be an amino acid, that could be an ion. Because none of those things are going to be able to pass through the bilayer. Remember something that's going to pass through the bilayer is going to be something small and nonpolar. Like for example oxygen can do this or carbon dioxide can do this. But the protein can I say this facilitates? In other words, it assists the movement of polar molecules across the cell membrane. And I want to add this dimension to these transport proteins. These transport proteins 
are very specific, very much like an enzyme. So in other words, if this is a, a tunnel for sodium, say this, this is sodium right there, this blue guy is sodium, then only sodium will be able to pass through. If glucose wanted to come in through the cell, I would have to create another, sorry, I would, I would have to create another door just for glucose to be able to pass through because each tunnel or each transport is unique. So that's an important, that's an important consideration. Let me go back to the previous slide just for a second. Do you notice down here it said proteins can assist, okay? Yes, they can assist the movement of molecules across. They can also regulate it. What does that mean, regulate it? Well, let's, let's talk about that just for a second. Like, for example, if you had a cell membrane like this, here's a cell membrane, and let me make the proteins a different color. I'll make the proteins like red. And there were two of them. And let's say this X represents glucose, and this is our blood. This is on the outside of the cell. And I just drank uh, something that was really sweet. Like, say I had a big glass of orange juice, and I got all this glucose out here, and it wants to get into the cells of my body. And it's like, okay. Um, it's just going to have to wait its turn. It's going to come in. The, it's going to come in this way, and this one's going to go in this way. But the truth is, if I really wanted more glucose to be absorbed, or if I really wanted to lower my blood sugar level, what the cell would really want to do is it would want to add, and it can do this, add more protein transports to the cell membrane. If I ask you, what do you think that's going to do? It's like, well, if you had 20 doors to the classroom, everyone would be able to come in simultaneously. And it's like, well, you don't need 20 doors. There's only a few people that come in. That's true. So the cell is able to only produce a few doors, but then when it needs to, it can make many doors, and then all the glucose can come in very quickly. So can you see how the membrane proteins can actually regulate the flow of materials across the cell membrane, not just assist. And so let me draw your attention to this video over here. This is kind of interesting. This is a video um, illustrating some of the points that we're making. Like here's the phospholipid bilayer. Here's a protein that's embedded into it. So it's some kind of carrier molecules that will facilitate the move, movement of molecules. So see these oranges right here? So that's either some kind of ion or it can be glucose. Do you see how it binds to the outside very much like an enzyme into the active site? This is very specific. And so this protein will allow that molecule to enter into the cell. And likewise, if orange wanted to leave, it, it could exit. But Notice how the orange can't pass through the phospholipid bilayer, can only pass through a protein. So the protein's not only facilitating its movement, but it's also regulating it. If you had more protein doors, more can be passing in. If you had less doors, then less would. In this final scene right here, you're, you're noticing how the protein can allow movement both in and out of the cell in both directions. So this is called uh, facilitated diffusion. And you're like, well, diffusion, what's that? Let's take a look, for example, at diffusion. Let's go back to the notes here. And diffusion is the word that I've been kind of wanting to use. In other words, diffusion answers the why question. Do you see these sort of orange cubes here on the bottom? And they're like, okay, how do they cross the cell membrane. How about if I told you that they're impermeable to the cell membrane, but they can go through a protein, so the protein can act as a transport, moving molecules across. But here's the question that I want to pose. I want to ask this question. Why? You know, here's the question if I was able to write this. Why do the, the molecules move across the cell membrane? Why does the chicken cross the road? Or why does the chicken cross the playground? The answer to that's easy to get to the other slide. <laughs> but in this case, the reason molecules move across the cell membrane 
is that simply because molecules are in constant motion. Molecules move. They have a certain kinetic energy to them. You're like, well, why are they moving one direction more than the other? Well, if they move in one direction more than the other, it means that they were highly concentrated in this area, and they're moving to an area that they're not very highly concentrated over here. So what I'm getting at is the idea of diffusion. We call it facilitated because a protein is assisting it, but the idea of diffusion itself simply means the movement of molecules down their own concentration gradient. Now, what does this mean, down their own concentration gradient? This means that in this picture, for example, if you see these, these red dots and these blue dots, do you see how they're highly concentrated on this side? If I were able to put these molecules into motion, obviously they're over there on the right side. Given a certain amount of time, they will be over on the left side. And so we call that diffusion, moving from one area to where they are to where they're not. And so if I can go back up here and make a little, little drawing of that very quickly, like say I had a cell like this, and I said, for example, let's use the X's again. And I said that there's a bunch of X's over here. So these are molecules that want to get into the cell, and then here's like two of them over here. And let's make three. So do you notice how the outside of the cell has more X's? So how we symbolize this is we use concentration brackets, and we say that it's highly concentrated on the outside and lower concentration on the inside. Now why is that? I just made that up. So if molecules are in constant motion, that means, say the membrane is permeable to X. So some X's will leave because they're all walking around and some will enter. This is true. Some are going in, some are going out. But can you see how if there's more outside the cell, the likelihood of them coming in is greater. They're going from where they are to where they're not. This is the concept of diffusion. So let's go back over here for a second. Back to the desktop. And let me show you this. I have another little animation that I want to show you here and how diffusion works. And it's rather clever. And let me play this. Do you see how these little red, or not sorry, these really <laughs> small yellow circles are moving around? These are molecules that are in constant motion. Say they're in a glass of water. You might even think like maybe they're, they're sugar. So this is a glass of sugar water and the molecules are moving like this. Well, let's pretend for a second that there was no sugar in the water. Okay, so it's just plain water. And I'm about to add a, a lump of sugar, like it's some sort of cube of sugar. Say, like, this is my tea. So each one of those orange dots represents sugar. So when I initially throw this lump of sugar into my tea, let me pause it. You can say, can you see here that the concentration, if I were to able to write on top of this, maybe I can. Do you see how the concentration of sugar is is greatest right here. So the concentration is greatest. So if I asked you where's the sugar going to be in 10 minutes, you might say it's going to move over to here where it's not because things move from an area of high concentration to low concentration. But what's interesting is, let me let it play. As you can see, as the animation continues to run, the, mo the molecules are moving and they're more likely to go from where they are to where they're not. So they go from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. What's interesting is we're all familiar with this. Like if you put a bag of tea into warm water, obviously the tea is going to steep out of the bag. It's going to leave out of the bag. What's interesting is if the water is warm, that means that these little balls are going to be moving that much faster. So diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And so this is really, really important in biology because this explains why molecules cross the cell membrane and move from one area to the other. And the answer is diffusion. That's why they're moving. It's not because the cell wants oxygen or it wants to get rid of carbon dioxide. Everything's in motion. And like, look over here in this picture. Do you notice how the red over time, the red is moving, and so the red now is moving back and forth. It's said to be in equilibrium, and you're like, well, hey, how come the blue didn't move? Ah, the blue wants to move, but it's being restricted by this dotted line. Apparently, it's too big. 
to get past that. And so that's, that's of consideration as well. So here's another picture of this showing that if you put dye into a glass of water and you had some sort of membrane barrier that allowed it to pass through, eventually over time the dye will move from high concentration to low concentration and eventually the molecules will move back and forth. So in other words, like if you can picture yourself sitting in class in the front at the desk, if I ask you to just get up from your desk and walk around the room, obviously you're going to go from where you are to where you're not. So you're going to go to the other side of the room and then walk back and forth. And if I said freeze after five minutes, probably all of you would be like this diagram, evenly distributed. Another example would be if you broke a bottle of perfume over in one side of the room, eventually this, the odor would diffuse across the other side until it was equal. So this last slide is showing you that do you see here there's there's red and there's orange? If red is highly concentrated on one side, it'll diffuse from the left to the right, and the orange will go from the right to the left. In other words, molecules diffuse down their own concentration gradient. Um, what I'm getting at with that is, let me show this. If you had a cell again, there's our cell. Oxygen, if it's highly concentrated on the outside of the cell, and if it's not so much on the inside of the cell, what's going to happen? I think you can predict oxygen's going to diffuse into the cell, and that is what's going to happen. But say you had another molecule, like say I had carbon dioxide in here that was in high concentration and low on the outside of the cell. So while oxygen is going in, carbon dioxide is going out. So things diffuse down their own concentration gradient. That's rather important as well. So this is what we wanted to say about diffusion. Uh, it's passive. In other words, these ones over here, these purple balls, will simply move from where they are to where they're not. Passive simply means that there's no energy required. The molecules are moving. It's just the way it's going to be. Diffusion explains why molecules pass through the cell membrane. I hope you enjoyed that video on diffusion. Thanks. Thanks for watching.